Thank you. There's such amazing energy that you have on stage. It's really fun to watch. So I think that everybody should give him another round of applause, as well as for all the other musicians on the stage who have incredible energy. OK, so Robert, tell us a little bit about your musical journey and how you've come to essentially live and breathe blues. Well, it all started for me when I was, when I was little. I was, uh, I think, six and a half or seven years old. I was, uh, I was born in Romania, and uh, I used to fool around a lot with radios and uh, cables at my grandparents' house, and uh, we had the satellite dish, and I somehow I just put the cables on the satellite dish, and I picked up this frequency, which it was a foreign language. It was not Romanian or at all. Um, and... Uh, I just picked up this frequency where they just announced something called American Music. And um, they started uh, playing this, um, um, this music, which was considered American music, which was blues music. So at the time, I had a little uh, cassette recorder. And um, I was listening, I think, the first stories I heard. If I remember that correctly, I think it was Mr. B.B. King. He was playing the Trulli's Gone with Tracy Chapman. And uh, I placed the cassette recording in front of the speaker of the actual radio, and I, I caught a bit of part of that. And then after Mr. Beebe, it was uh, Eric Clapton, who was playing Have You Ever Loved a Woman, which is actually a Freddie King song. And I recorded that. And then I think that I don't remember quite, quite what the third song was, but um, I was just grateful to be able to kind of record that. And it moved me. It moved me inside. I, didn't, I couldn't even tell what they were saying, uh, what they were singing about, what this music was about. We, I didn't know nothing. I just, uh, it just moved me inside. And uh, fun enough, at the same time, uh, we had uh, one of our neighbors in the apartment building, um, one of the lady, her husband passed away, and the kids came to, to get her to move her to another country, and they were cleaning her apartment. And uh, I was outside listening to this cassette, and I saw them throwing uh, an acoustic guitar, a Yamaha G26, into the garbage bin. So I digged into the garbage bin, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I got this guitar, and I went home. And um, um, my grandma let me keep it, and I, uh, um, I gave it a good clean. And I was trying obsessively to emulate what I was hearing. You know, um, especially that uh, the little vibrato that BB has. I was trying to do that, and uh, I didn't know how to tune. I didn't know anything. I was a skinny guy, a skinny kid with this huge guitar on me, trying to do that. And until two, three in the morning, my grandma was yelling at me to get out of the bathroom and stop playing. I, I just, I was just obsessed. And so you mentioned B.B. King and Eric Clapton as being a strong influences. Among in others. Journey. There's, uh, Among others. yeah, there's, I mean, there's Buddy Guy, uh, the, the, there's Albert King, uh, there is Robert Cray. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, there is Robert Johnson, all the way, all the way to the fields, all the way to the fields where it's like the blues was born in the fields and uh, all the way to the Capella music. It just kind of, it just touched me and uh, kind of made me feel something inside that no, no other genre made me feel like that. And in the music that you write today, um, how have these influences that you've had find, found themselves in your writing now? Right. Well, the hardest thing to do as a, as a music songwriter is basically to don't sound like anybody else, yeah. which is the <laughs> kind of like the challenge that we all have. Uh, and I mean, I'm talking about myself, but we got Vic Solo here and then we got He's a singer-songwriter as well. He's got he's got a bunch of originals and uh, the the thing. Yeah, let's give it up for this guy. He's he's very amazing. Let's give it up for him. Um, and the others, of course. But it's you know what? It's I don't always try to be like okay, I gotta sound like this. I gotta sound like that. It's just it's just something that flows out of you, and then later on you're like, oh, that sounds like something I heard. And or sometimes you write it. You write. You write something, um, you just a chord progression, and then you got to be careful because it might be something you heard. It must be something I heard like I don't know seven months ago on the radio, and I'm repeating it. So it's 
you kind of have to be very careful. But those influences, I don't label them. I just let people decide what wherever they wanna they wanna um, they label me as or whatever. I you know the supporters they've been so great to me and uh, for all of these years and yeah. And the next song that you're performing is called Heal Your Heart. Heal your heart. Yeah. Is there any story behind that? Is it about there is. So uh, the whole album Redemption is basically reflects my journey. And um, the order that it was placed uh, on the record, um, it was actually reflecting in a kind of chronological way from uh, today points of view to kind of like where I ended up. So Heal My Heart is basically, it's one of those, um, when I was writing this album, I, I had a bunch of songs that I wrote in the past and some new song came along the journey of, of songwriting, but this specific one was um, basically just, um, it brought me back to a stage where I was, um, I was basically going through a rough time. It's almost a cry of desperation for God to, to heal that broken heart that you have, you know, throughout your journey. And uh, I hope this will actually relate to, to you guys, to the listeners, so. All right, well, we look forward to hearing it. So everybody give a round of applause. Thank you. For his next song.